Hey, Ronnie. It's Gareth. Oh, Ronnie Ratface. Oh. Ronnie Ratface. He looks like a rat. <laughs> Doesn't he? <laughs> okay. you, you look well. You I'm very good, well, man. thank you, Jane. I'm very well mm. indeed. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, lots of things happen in life. Uh, yeah. And when I read, for a reason. they do. And when I read the other day that um, you put a tweet out saying, uh, or an Instagram post or a tweet, whatever it was, saying you're so made up and you were shocked to be inducted yeah, into the International Hall of Fame. Well, how, how did you find out about it? So I got a call. I thought it was a scam call. You know, one of them American numbers from Ed Brophy from kind of store. Yeah. Over, the Boxing Hall of Fame, and I was like, oh, who's this now? Answer the phone, and I was like, yeah, whatever, mate. Put the phone down, then he ran me back. And I was like, is oh, the proper Hall of Fame? And he was like, yeah. I went, where Ali and Fraser are? And he was like, yeah. I was like, wow. So shot. I think what it is, Gareth, for me, so all this with women's boxing at the minute, it's, it's new to England, but it's not new to me because I was around in the 90s and early 2000s when they was all doing it in America. And it, it was like it is now in England. It was like this in America, you know, with Lucia Riker, Christy Martin, Sumi Anani, Holly Holm. So I was like mixing with all them, just trying to get that to England sort of thing. But it... I don't, I don't know. It, it's just weird how it's all just come around and it's telling the right story. Because no disrespect to the other women, there's been a lot of publicity around women's boxing, but the truth of the story of how women's boxing got start, started just gets missed. Mm. Like, it, I can't imagine the women of today flying over to America, paying their own effort, sleeping on a hotel floor or borrowing a room off Kevin Francis because that's how hard it was. It wasn't about. And and I didn't mind. And I'm not going, oh, playing the victim card because I enjoyed what I did, even though it was hard. Yeah. Like, I've had a hard upbringing anyway. And, and to me, I had to do that to get a fight. And, and even boxing on the NAS bill, I was boxing for, for no money just to get on the NAS bill, because then that would have highlighted women's boxing. But like I said, to me, that was just a natural process of getting what they had in America back to England. So I I didn't mourn about it and play the victim, and I just got on with it. And then, and then now I sit back and I think, wow, I'm 55 now, and I think, how did I do all that? But I enjoyed every minute of it. I had, I had a ball. I had an absolute ball. I didn't make no money out of the sport, but what I did get is a legacy that no one can ever take away from me. And even though I wasn't recognised in Britain, like they must be kicking themselves now thinking, wow, she's in the Hall of Fame and, and we didn't even care about her. You know what I mean? Whereas it now... Does it seem incredible now that that, that what, the reasons being given at the time were PMS and... <laughs> Um, but that was one of the reasons given, wasn't it, you know? So it said, so at the time, my barrister, Dinah Rose, the great, wonderful Di Dinah Rose, was was heavily pregnant. And she um, she just couldn't believe what she was hearing, you know. And and then it wasn't till we was in that court case and Nipper Reed and the doctor was getting on the stand and saying, you know, and one of the... the, the women that made the decision, one of the judges was a woman and they tried to settle out of court and I was like, yeah, settle out of court I just want my licence, that's all I want I don't want anything else my barrister was like, Jane, no we're having our day in court like the things they were saying was like, well, as she's getting up onto the ring, climbing up the steps she might fall over because she's got premenstrual tension and, and, and things like that, it, and then other girls in the sport, they know who they are, that they sort of was pinching lines out from that court case and saying it themselves on TV and pretending to be the first woman. And I was just like, wow, this story... I, in the end, I just give up trying to tell the story because nobody was getting it, nobody was listening. 
And then all of a sudden, I wrote the book, Get in the Hall of Fame, and now the real story, people like yourself who saw the hardship and saw that what I had to do. Oh, saw it and first I, hand because we were with you, and I remember oh. you staying in other journos' um, rooms because you'd literally had run out of money and you needed a room for the night on the last yeah. night or the night after. And, um, and you've got to remember, I was training on a farm on the outskirts of Bristol in the middle of nowhere. Nobody wanted to know women's boxing. Everyone thought I was weird because I wanted to box. And I was trying to fund myself at the farm. So, mm. and Tex was getting on in years. And this is Tex, your coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was my coach and manager, bless him, but he was old by then. And, you know, he used to get me to do everything for free. And, oh, you need to fight and you need to do this interview. So I never got paid because we were trying to make a difference. But Tex wasn't experienced enough to do it. But then you've got all these managers now that are managing and training women and saying, oh, we've got the best woman. They wouldn't even speak to me when I was boxing. And they know who they are. And and I just think to myself, like, what? It, I mean, come on, Gareth, this was 2006, 2005. By the time I was really really well-known and yeah. travelling around the world. I was doing it in the 90s, but as women boxing was getting more accepted, all these managers and all these promoters decided to sign a, a woman boxer, and you're like, what did I do wrong? So for a lot of years, I was a bit down on myself because I thought it was me. I thought, it's just me, it's just how I am because I'm direct. I'm up front, I'm honest, I just say things how it is. And and then when they were signing all these other women and the fights were no better, people saying, oh, how would you get on in this day? I'll tell you how I'd get on in this day. And you know this, I would either beat them or, or they'd have a really hard night. I was a good fighter. I was very fit. I was very dedicated. I stayed on that farm for 16 years and hardly ever left the farm. Would you have been was... fighting Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields today? No, I was only like Welter, so I'd have been Katie Taylor, um, I'd have been Chantel Cameron. Tasha Jonas. But you, you, I, you never struck me as a small person, though. You you were always physically big. Yeah, you... and I'm, I'm bit, I was always, I was 16 years in a training camp because, because I started from Norway, I had no amateur experience. So my first few years was just learning how to box rather than fight, because I was a fighter. Everybody knew that, but it took me a long time of training with top professionals and top amateurs in Bristol, and and then men. Another thing, I was reading something about men and women sparring as well. I sparred with men because there was no women, and then men were brilliant women. They didn't hit me full force. If they did, they can't remember Glenn Catley. Glenn Catley caught me with a left up once, and they had to edit it for two weeks, and he didn't even do it hard. And then I sparred Dean Francis. I couldn't lay a glove on Dean Francis, God, re God rest his yeah. soul. Yeah. But the difference in the men at top level, and then then I used to spar top amateurs like Eddie Edges, Simon Stoll, journeyman Chris Long. And, and I was in wars with them because we was on a similar level. But then as soon as I stepped up to spar with Catley or, or Francis, I was out of my depth. So all them years in the gym, they was helping me learning and learning the difference between that level and that level. When you and, when you look back on um beating up Michael Barrymore live on TV, <laughs> <laughs> does that when you watch it back, does it give you nightmares or not? Or was it is it just funny? Not really, because you've got to remember at the time I did that interview, there was three channels on the telly. So everybody knew who I was. Everybody knew and and everyone was like, wow, we didn't realise women could box. And so it was a good advert for me as well as Michael. And and I didn't just beat him up. I beat his security guard up when they tried to get me off him in the audience. But that was me. I mean, yeah, crazy. I'm crazy. I always have been. I'm hyperactive. I've got an overactive brain. But it's just me. And if I haven't have had the hyperactivity and the overactive brain... I would never have ever been able to travel around the world fighting Holly Holm and all the top girls in the world and holding me on and beating them.
Do you know what I mean? Boxing on the same bill as Roy Jones Jr., Lennox Lewis, Prince Nassim Ahmed, going out partying with Mickey Ward after the fight. I have got some absolutely amazing, amazing memories. And I just think the girls of today are so, so lucky. They are very and lucky just, compared to you, definitely. I wonder, yeah. I, if I had, I, mean, I remember getting a call to fight Lucy and Riker on the undercard of Lennox Lewis in LA at 12 days notice. I was a stone overweight. I wasn't fit. And I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you know what? Me and her had the best fight of the night. I think I think we like just stunned everybody of how good the fight actually was. I lost on points, no disgrace there, to one of the greatest fighters ever to put a pair of gloves on. She was amazing, Riker. And we're still friends to this day. But, like, you know, I just it's just changed so much. And it seems to be, like, the, the women are... A sort of, I don't know, instead of going along and enjoying the ride and get the fights made and fight and get on with it and and just enjoy the ride because a few years it'll be all over. It's a hard sport. I had 39 fights. Like, yeah, I've got some aches and pains and my brain doesn't work the same as it used to. But listen, five times world champion, NBA, all the famer, game over. And, um, you know, and, and your book was amazing as well about your life. And it's it's captured a lot of attention, hasn't it? Because because of the nature of you, because of those stories. I think what you are is testament to legacy. The legacy doesn't always come a year or two years yeah. after you stopped. It's, it comes later on, doesn't it? It comes later on. And people it appreciate comes later. you now. People really appreciate what what you've done, you know? But also, I appreciate it more because when I was young and I got me hyperactivity head on, I was I was mixing with the stars. I was I was backstage in New York and George Foreman gave me his badge going, wow, man, you can fight. And Denzel Washington, like, helping me take my T-shirt off. And I forget all that. I forget, Denzel I forgot Washington all... helping you take your T-shirt off? Yeah, yeah. Well, in the back the of the fight. Yeah, in Foxwoods Casino, I thought... Oh, yeah, I was, there. I was there for the Foxwoods. Yeah, yeah, Liam, there, yeah. Liam Mellinger, it was amazing. And all the stars were just there and just so supportive. But I always had massive, massive support in America because all them had all gone before me, like Sue Fox and Tiger Lily, and, and they just appreciated me more than, than England did. But also, I never had any media training and... I didn't oh, realise you could grab my hair and kiss me on yeah. the cheek. Oh, you've got lovely hair, love. Yeah. And, and no, but, but we we got you as some, um, and I mean, you were scary then. Not scary, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. You, you I had was scary. so much. You were scary, yeah. You had, scary. But, but you were, you were, I don't know, there was an honesty about you that we couldn't not love you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and, as, and I used to fly over with all the journalists because obviously it was on a big fight like Naz or Lennox. So I'd be on the plane with other journalists, but they weren't interested in me. They was interested in Naz or Lennox or Roy Jones Jr. and Mickey Ward, not let alone Jane. And I knew, and I didn't want the publicity. I don't care about being famous and being recognised, I don't care so I used to have a laugh with all the journalists, all the old type journalists like yourself, like Kevin Francis, like Terry Dooley the real boxing people that know boxing and know how hard it was and how hard it was for me so they didn't write about me because what what would they want to write about me for? I was just a little scrag from Fleetwood You were the Fleetwood the assassin, back. remember? Yeah, but but on a little six or eight rounder on an undercard in America, loving it. Free holiday, that's what it was for me. I won't get in pay, but look at the people that I was meeting and that I was mixing with. It, it, it was brilliant days. What will it mean? <laughs> what will it mean when you um, <laughs> when you when you go to Kenestota? I'm just looking at the inductees: Ricky Hatton, just... Michael Mora, Anna Maria Torres, yourself, Ivan Ivan Calderon, Diego. The great, the late great Diego right. Corrales. Uh, when I fought in, I fought in um, LA, and Diego Corrales was fighting the day after, so I had the pleasure 
of spending like two or three days with Diego and Dan Goosen and all the Goosen family. Two mad hatters together. Yeah, um, really, we had just the best time ever. And to be inducted in, with them, I just don't know. I've got to do a speech. You might need to help me there, mate. No problem at all. No problem at all. I, uh, ju you just let me know and I will take it out. You dictate and I'll be your secretary. Absolutely no problem at all. I don't um, think it just, you know, I think the truth is, is now's the time for the real story of how women's boxing really got licensed and and the hardship that I did go through. Like I said, not playing the victim. I don't care about none of that because look where it is today. But then again, today, if I was around, I don't know. Would I still would I still be the same person? I don't know. I I, I don't know. I think I just played up abroad and played up with everyone and parted with everybody after the fight because I was just enjoying myself and I, I just wanted I just wanted to get to the top. Do you do you with this final thing, obviously I mean, I can't reveal too much. I know it's kind of under wraps at the moment, but there was a series being made about your life because your book had been bought. That was well publicised. Um, by you know, and Saran Jones was going to play the lawyer or the barrister. Um, now with the in Hall of Fame induction, would you like to get involved in a consultative way with women's boxing and try and help in the coming years, or, or does that not bother you? It's so much different, Gareth, to, to when I did it. And I'm not great doing speaking and doing commentary. It's, but it's I think not you have something to give. I think you've got advice to give still, because even though there is an easier route for women now, they still have difficulties. They, they still, they're still struggling to get permission for three-minute rounds. They're still... They're wanting... But listen... Women's boxing, really, is still in its infancy. Yeah, I agree. And th th there's a long, long way to go, a hell of a long way to go, until it gets on the same level as men, which that's another 10 years away, at least another 10 years away. And But well, I don't know. I did my fighting. And don't forget, while I was fighting out of the ring, I was fighting in the ring. I was training six days a week. Mm. I was away from my family and my friends. So I just think I deserve that break from boxing and just let me watch from the outside. Do you I enjoy still... it? Have you enjoyed the Chantal Cameron, Katie Taylor fights? I mean, we've had two tremendous brilliant. fights from them. Yeah. Two brilliant fights. Absolutely brilliant fights. And and it, it, I just wonder if that opportunity for me to have been about in them days, I got, like when I boxed Jamie Clampett, we got Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. You know, I was involved in some really big wars and big fights over the years, which never got any recognition or publicity because, but to see it now is, it's a totally different game. And yeah, I do. I'm so proud when I watch them, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be the sort of, I don't know. Voice. You don't want to be a voice within it. No, no. I can't explain it. It's, it's bittersweet for me. And, and also, like I said, there's a lot of trainers, managers and promoters that said some terrible things to my face in the 90s and the early 2000s. And I'm the type of person, if I see them people, then I'm going to tell them anyway. So I'd better to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, finally, many congratulations on your Thank award. You. It's so well deserved. And, and and I think you've noticed that it's something that's put a smile on a lot of people's faces because there's a lot yeah. of people out out here yeah. that support you. Might have upset a few people as well, Gareth Way. That's boxing. Exactly. <laughs> Love you.